Welcome to Logic Basics. The first question is, why study logic at all? Logic has its roots in both Eastern and Western philosophies, but today it's used in computer science and the study of law. No matter how you're going to apply logic, there's certain basic information you need to know. You need to know the meaning of a logical statement, how to negate a logical statement, and how to use certain terms within statements called quantifiers. So the definition of a statement in logic is a declarative sentence that can be determined to be true or false, but not both simultaneously. For example, the sentence, how do you spell your name, is not a logical statement because it's not declarative, it's a question. The statement, the earth revolves around the sun, however, is a logical statement because it can be determined whether it's true or false, and it's a declarative sentence. Alan is not a good student, on the other hand. While it is a declarative sentence, is an opinion. The term good is not well defined, and so we cannot determine whether the statement is true or false. The statement 1 plus 2 equals 3, even though it's written in mathematical symbols, is an, is an actual sentence, and it's true, and so it's a statement. Finally, this sentence is false. This is a tricky one. It refers to itself when it says this sentence is false. Now. To analyze this, we're going to think about what would happen if I assume the statement is true. If I assume it's true, then it's telling me that it's false, which is a contradiction. Or another way of thinking of it is that it's both true and false simultaneously. Similarly, if we assume it's false, if it's false to say the sentence is false, then the opposite is that it's true. And so it's both false and true simultaneously. So this is not a statement. It's a contradiction or a fallacy. Sometimes we put more than one statement together to make a compound statement and we join them with um, things called connectives. The, two, the parts are component statements and the words joining the two parts are connectives like and, or, not, and if then. So, for example, I can make up sentences um, which join these component statements together into compound statements. Logic is mental exercise. Push-ups are physical exercise. I will exercise. For example, logic is mental exercise and push-ups are physical exercise. Now, one interesting thing in logic is that a lot of times the, uh, the English language has connotations which don't affect the truth value, whether the statement is true or false. For example, I could change the statement logic is mental exercise and push-ups are physical exercise to logic is mental exercise but push-ups are physical exercise. This has a different connotation in the English language, but it doesn't change the logical outcome. So, in logic, the connective but is the same as the connective and. However, the word or gives it a completely different meaning. Logic is mental exercise or I will exercise. One or the other is taking place. If logic is mental exercise, then I will exercise is yet another meaning separate from and, the if-then form. We're going to study this a lot in logic particularly important in contracts if such and such occurs if um, if you complete certain tasks then you will be awarded a certain amount of money so it's very important that it's clear um, when that statement is true and when somebody has lied to you and we can also throw in the negation of a statement throwing in the word not negates a statement if logic is mental exercise then I will not exercise 
So let's decide whether these two statements are compound statements or not. In part A, we have, if Amanda said it, then it must be true. You can tell that this is an example of a compound statement because the if-then connective is joining two simple components. The components are, Amanda said it, and it must be true. On the other hand, the pool was made by Alex and Sons pools. While it has the word and in it, and is not acting as a logical connective because it's not joining two statements. Now let's talk about negations. The negation of a true statement is false and the negation of a false statement is true. For example, Alejandro has a valuable baseball card. The negation of that statement is Alejandro does not have a valuable baseball card. These two statements are in fact negations of each other. They have the opposite truth value in every scenario. So here are the two possible scenarios. Let's suppose he does have a baseball card, then to say Alejandro has a valuable baseball card would be true, and to say he doesn't would be false. On the other hand, suppose he doesn't, then to say he does would be true, and to say he doesn't, I mean, to say he does would be false, and to say he doesn't would be true. Opposites. Sometimes it's a little bit um, trickier than that, and we're going to look at some different scenarios. First example we're going to look at, the earth revolves around the sun. How would you write the negation of that statement? So if somebody said the earth revolves around the sun and you disagreed with that person, what would you say? So one possible solution is to say it's not the case that the earth revolves around the sun. The phrase, it is not the case that, is sort of a catch-all. You can negate anything using that phrase. The earth does not revolve around the sun is also a way of negating that statement. Now, one common error when people work this particular problem is to think that if they reverse it and say the sun revolves around the earth, that that would be a negation. But these, in fact, are not negations of each other. To understand this, consider a scenario where both of them would be false. Let's suppose that in our universe, the Sun and Earth both revolved around Saturn. Then in this case, both of the statements would be false. The Sun doesn't revolve around the Earth, and the Earth does not revolve around the Sun. Since they don't have these, the opposite truth values in every scenario, these are not negations of each other. Now let's look at write the negation of the statement, all students take calculus. So, if you disagreed with that statement, what would you say? So, you have to remember, whatever your statement is that you're thinking, it has to take into consideration that it has to be the opposite truth value in every possible scenario. So, we're going to analyze this in great detail just to justify our solution. We're going to suppose that there are three students in the class and there are the objects under consideration. And we're going to list all the possible scenarios. So let's say our students are Alicia, Bo, and Caden. It's possible that all of them take calculus. In fact, that was the uh, statement that we're analyzing. That would be the yes, 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 row one. But maybe Alicia and Bo take calculus, but Caden doesn't. That would be row two, and so on. So our statement is that they all do. That's only one scenario out of the eight distinct different scenarios. So the negation of this statement has to take every other possible scenario into consideration. Now a lot of times people think the negation of all do is to say that none do, but notice that only covers one other scenario, the last one where nobody does, and leaves out all the ones in between. So a better solution that takes into consideration all the different scenarios is to say that at least one student does not take calculus. Could be two students, could be three, but at least one student is not taking calculus. Or equivalently, some students do not take calculus. So in logic, some and at least one mean the same thing. So in general, the negation of all do is some don't. So how would you negate all children like ice cream? You would say, well, I think that there's at least one child out there that doesn't like ice cream. So some children do not like ice cream. 
Or if somebody said all politicians lie, you could say, well, there's at least one politician who does not lie. And you're contradicting the original statement. And you're taking into consideration every possible alternative. Now, going back the other way, if the original statement is some students take calculus, let's think about our chart. Some do would be the first seven scenarios there where there's at least one student who's taking calculus. And the only thing left, the only other possibility is the opposite. No students take calculus. So the negation of some do is none do. So if someone said some pastas are gluten free and you disagreed, you'd say, well, I don't think so. No pastas are gluten free. And if somebody said some politicians do tell the truth, in order to negate that, you'd have to conclude that no politicians tell the truth. Now, what we saw in these examples are words called quantifiers. Words like all each, every, and none are called universal quantifiers because they describe characteristics that apply to everybody under consideration. We also saw existential quantifiers such as some, there exists, or for at least one. So these are saying that they're, they're guaranteeing the existence of something with that particular characteristic. When we negated all do, we used some do not. So notice that the negation of the universal quantifier all was the existential quantifier some with the negation not. And when we negated some do, which had an existential quantifier, we ended up with none do, a universal. So how would you write the negation of no children like green beans without using the catch-all, it is not the case that no children like green beans. Since no is a universal quantifier, no children like green beans, we're going to, we know that we're going to use an existential. So the negation of that would be that some do like green beans. In part B, we have some children do not like ice cream. If I disagree with that, then I'm saying all children do like ice cream. This concludes Logic Basics. We've covered statements, quantifiers, and negations. Look for other logic videos on these topics.